So good morning, everyone. I'm Joan Powers, the Director of the Small Business Development Center, and pleased to have Dan and Matt here from Empire State Development, um, who have the expertise in the new New York State COVID pandemic small business recovery grant program. So um, they're our go-to people when we need to ask questions about it, and they're gonna go through the all of how you apply and all of the nuances. Um, but remember that you can always come to the SBDC um, and we can give you some assistance uh, too. So um, along with other things that we do. So I'm gonna turn the program over to um, Matt. If you could introduce yourself and then that would be wonderful. Okay. Hello, everybody. So my name is Matt Kennedy. I am from Empire State Development's uh, Division for Small Business and Technology Development. I'm actually based out of our statewide office in Albany. I am uh, part of the Access to Capital team, where we work on various capital programs, various uh, loan programs for small businesses, along with this, the COVID-19 pandemic small business recovery grant program, which we've been working on for the last several weeks. So I'm going to walk through the program requirements along with this application guide. The portal did open at noon yesterday. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is to improve bandwidth and to make sure my, my speech doesn't break up. I am going to switch my camera off. I'm still here. You'll still be able to hear me. I'll turn it back on at the end. But I find that with these heavy slide presentations, this might work better. There we go. So now this application and program guide is actually available on the website for the program itself so if you are interested in these slides they're always going to be available on the site right on the front page and uh, over time as minor changes are made or minor updates are made to the to the slides to the program the newest version of these slides is always going to be available on that main page also over time uh, these are in the process of being translated into other languages. So if you should need it in another language, there are actually going to be uh, 13, 13 languages, including English, that support and much of this documentation is going to be available in. So without further ado, we'll get started. Uh, the COVID-19 Pandemic Small Business Recovery Grant Program was created to provide flexible grant assistance to small businesses, micro businesses, and for-profit independent arts and cultural organizations who have experienced economic hardship during the COVID-19 pandemic. Said so it doesn't, it's not listed here, but it is an 800, 800 million dollar program. So it's specifically targeted towards those viable businesses. And uh, for grant amounts, grant awards are calculated based on a business, a business's annual gross receipts for the year 2019 based on their tax return. And for businesses with annual gross receipts in 2019 between $25,000 and $49,999, it is a flat award of $5,000. For businesses with gross receipts in 2019 between $50,000 and $99,999, it is $10,000 per business. And for businesses with gross receipts between the $100,000 and $500,000 range, again, that is 10% of gross receipts up to $50,000 as a maximum award. So it's based on the actual gross receipts. It's a 10% calculation. If you had $250,000 in gross receipts, that would be a $25,000 grant. So a couple quick definitions. A small business for New York State is any business that's, that's uh, located in, incorporated in New York State with 100 or fewer employees. When, in, when I say micro business, a micro business is a business that's incorporated in New York State, licensed, registered in New York State um, with 10 or fewer employees. A for-profit independent arts and cultural organization, again, uh, is going to have fewer than 100 employees uh, that are not including seasonal employees that operate a live performance venue, a production company, a performance-related business, uh, you know, for theater, arts, music, opera, media, literature, museums, folk arts, etc. And COVID-19 health and safety protocols, of course, are the are the protocols that have been put in place uh, due to the governor's the governor's executive order 202 in 2020. So small businesses, micro businesses, and, and for-profit independent arts and cultural organizations have to be currently viable. Uh, they do have to have been in operation as of March 1st, 2019. So businesses need to have begun operation on or before March 1st, 2019. Uh, need to be in operation for one year prior to COVID to qualify. Oh, God. <laughs> and viability is determined to be based on whether it is uh, 
determined by if the applicant has a positive net profit in 2019 as evidenced uh, by their federal tax returns. Um, eligible applicants are required to show a loss of gross receipts as a result of COVID-19 and compliance with health and safety protocols. And we'll get a little deeper into that in just a moment. So eligible small businesses uh, are going to have 2019 or 2020 gross receipts between $25,000 and $500,000 per year. Uh, and that's going to be based upon line 1A of their corporate or partnership tax return or line 1 on their form 1040 Schedule C. Uh, farms that use Schedule F are eligible. So that's not listed here, but if you do use a Schedule F for a farming uh, business, you are eligible. You have to be able to demonstrate net profit for, on your 2019 business return of at least $1. So prior to COVID, the business needed to be profitable by, by at least a dollar as evidenced by your tax return, line, line 28 for the corporate return, line 22 for the partnership return, line 31 on the Schedule C. And you need to be able to demonstrate that you've had at least a 25% loss in annual gross receipts in a year-to-year -year gross receipt comparison as of December 31st, 2020. So essentially, we're going to be looking at your 2019 tax return, subtracting your 2020 tax return. And as long as it's at least a 25% revenue loss, you should qualify. And someone's microphone is making a really loud noise. I don't know if everyone can mute themselves uh, to stop the background noise to be terrific so um that loss again like i said is calculated from your tax returns for the businesses that were not in business uh, let's say in january 2019 they're going to use this uh, com comparable number of months in 2020 uh for to calculate the loss so if it's for the handful of businesses that were not in business in january and february but still would qualify because they started march 1st there you can use a comparable number of months um, you do need to also demonstrate that your total expenses in 2020 are greater than the grant amount you would receive. These are reimbursement grants. They're intended to be used for, uh, for COVID related purposes. So if a business didn't have enough expenses in the year, that's the size of their grant, obviously, uh, you know, they don't need a grant for expenses they didn't incur. And you do have to be in substantial compliance with applicable federal, state, and local laws, of course, with regulations, codes, and requirements. A couple other quick things. You do not, you're not allowed to, to uh, be in arrears on your taxes. So you can't owe any federal, state, or local taxes prior to July 15th, 2020. However, you can have an approved repayment plan. So if you do have an re approved repayment plan on those taxes or some sort of deferral plan, with whatever the taxing authority is, that is accepted. So you just have proof of that, you should be okay. Also, uh, you, may, you are expected not to have qualified for business grant assistance programs under uh, the federal programs or have been unable to obtain sufficient assistance from such federal programs. So what that means is with these four federal programs, you can have received a Paycheck Protection Program loan or loans of more than $100,000. So there's a $100,000 cap on paycheck protection loans. Uh, you can't re have received an idle advance grant of more than $10,000. You can't have received an idle 19 supplemental targeted advance grant of more than $5,000. Uh, that should allow everyone who has an idle grant to qualify actually, because I don't believe idle offered grants larger than those amounts. And you can have received a sh uh, SBA shuttered venue operator grant. Those are allowed of any size. So Paycheck Protection Program loans totaling $100,000 or less are allowed. Eligible applicants do have to provide evidence acceptable to New York State that the applicant is operational and that the eligible applicant is not restricted by any current mandates, as, you know, not in, not has, let's say, has a valid liquor license if, if, you're, uh, if you were a, uh, a liquor distributor, it hasn't been revoked. Uh, due to the limited amount of funding and high volume of requests expected, your business type, your geography, your industry could play a factor in your ability to receive a grant. Uh, if too much money was going to one area of the state, uh, it's possible that they could have to restrict that. And priority is going to be given to socially and economically disadvantaged business owners, including but not limited to minority and women-owned business enterprises, which do not have to be New York State certified, uh, service-disabled veteran-owned businesses, and veteran-owned businesses and businesses that were located in economically distressed areas prior to March 1st, 2020 is determined by census data. So those, uh, those particular applications uh, may get prioritized in processing. 
So now for some ineligible businesses, there are some businesses that are not going to be eligible for this program. Um, all nonprofits, churches, and, and religious institutions are not eligible. You do have to be a for-profit business. Government-owned entities and elected official offices are not allowed. Uh, businesses primarily engaged in political or lobbying activities are not allowed. And this is an important note. Businesses that received awards from the SBA Restaurant Revitalization Grant Program uh, are not allowed. If you did receive an award from the Re Restaurant Revitalization Grant Program, you are excluded from this program, primarily because those awards, of course, are very generous. They're designed to make up all lost revenue. So if you were lucky enough to be able to receive one of those awards, uh, you, I'm sorry, you are excluded from this particular program. Uh, landlords and passive real estate income businesses are excluded from this program because there are other programs for landlords that are run by other agencies. Uh, illegal businesses and enterprises, of course, are excluded. And there could be other industries or business types, although we don't anticipate any at this moment. <clears throat> so for required documentation, this is the documentation we're going to be looking at. We're going to be Yes. Uh, we have a, I have a question in the chat. Um, do you want to answer the questions now or at the end? Um, uh, well, I can, I can answer this question now, but I would probably prefer to hold them at the end because there's going to be a lot of other stuff we're going to cover, but what's the question? Okay. It's about um, if someone received pandemic unemployment assistance benefits in 20 and 21, does that disqualify them from this grant? Uh, well, this is primarily for small businesses, not for someone who was unemployed. But no, there's no specific, there's no special, um, no special exclusion okay, for that particular program. Yeah, because some of the unemployment um, benefits uh, could be paid to people who um, also had a business. So, okay, okay. thank yeah, you. Sure. So now for required documentation. Uh, for the proof of gross receipts loss or other economic hardship that we are basing this on your 2019 and 2020 business income tax returns, we do need your full filed tax return. So it needs to be complete with all documents. Um, for corporations, of course, that's your 1120. For partnerships, your 1065. For sole proprietorships, it's going to be your 1040, along with Schedule C's and Schedule F's, whatever schedules you required for your business. Uh, we will be looking for a completed IRS form 4506C. Now, this is going to be if requested. It does not need to be uploaded at the time of your application. Uh, if, if Lendistry needs that to verify your tax information, they're going to request one, and they will send you that document to complete and sign because there are lines in the document that need to be filled out before you sign it uh, as to where the information can be released to. Also, we're going to need proof of business location and current operation. Uh, for your business to show that you're currently operating and where you're located. So uh, any two of the following on this list will work. A, a current lease, a utility bill for the business, a, a current business bank statement, a current business mortgage statement, a business credit card statement, that would be a credit card statement for the business with the business listed on it, a professional insurance bill for your business, a payment processing statement, that would be a statement like if you used a credit card processor, that statement would work, and your New York State ST-809 or ST-100 sales tax collection documentation that you're going to submit to New York State that also qualifies as proof of current operation. Uh, additionally, we'll be looking for a schedule of ownership, which is going to be a listing of the names, addresses, social security numbers, or ITIN numbers for non-US owners, uh, phone numbers, email addresses, and your, the percentage ownership of each person with a photo ID for anyone in your business that owns at least 20% of it. Uh, to complete the application, we only need that from one person. We request that one person be at least a 20% owner of the business, be authorized to execute the application, and they do have to upload their photo ID. But before the grant is actually funded, we'll be collecting the information for the rest of the owners, including their IDs. Uh, for the proof of number of employees, we're using the most recently submitted NYS 45 document for your, for your employees. So if you do have employees, we'll need that document. Of course, uh, that is the document that shows the taxes that you're withholding that's reported in New York State. Uh, and for question six here, we have the proof of business organization. Again, this is going to be collected after, the t after uh, your loan is, your grant has been selected for, for processing. We will need a copy of a current business license, a current business certificate, a certificate of organization, 
a certificate of assumed name, which is also known, of course, as a DBA, your certificate of authority from New York State tax, uh, potentially your articles of corporation or any other document from uh, that's uh, issued by a New York State municipality that shows authorization to operate in New York State. So we do only need one of those items. So just one of those documents to show that you're licensed. And ultimately for funds distribution, and we'll cover this a little bit later, uh, we'll need your IRS form W-9 and your bank account information, which actually is processed via plaid on the website. So we talked about the grants. So we haven't really talked about the eligible use of the grants. So grants are expected to be used for COVID-19 related expenses incurred between March 1st, 2020 and April 1st, 2021. So these are really reimbursements for expenses that were already incurred as related to COVID and expenses that were incurred by your business. We do understand that uh, your business may have already paid these bills. Essentially, it's reimbursing the, the, the business for those bills. If you were, if the, if let's say you as the business owner had to pay these bills for your business out of your pocket, uh, you can allow your business to reimburse yourself. Um, so what's covered for these, these types of expenses? Payroll costs, uh, commercial rent and mortgage payments, and that includes principal payments, but does not include prepayments. So principal is allowed in this program. Uh, payment of local school and property taxes uh, for the for the business business location is allowed. Uh, insurance costs, utility costs, costs of personal protection equipment necessary to protect your workers and, or your customers. Uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning costs related to your business. So that's a wide array of things that could include changing filters for COVID nineteen or patio heaters would even be acceptable. Um, other machinery and equipment costs related to COVID. Let's say you needed to buy insulated uh, to-go bags or insulated bags for deliveries. That would, those, that, would, that would be an equipment cost that would be allowable. Um, supplies and materials necessary for compliance with COVID-19 health and safety protocols. So that includes things like plexiglass and Lexan and plywood and all the parts that were necessary to make various barriers and things that you had to do uh, if you had a retail business to, to separate yourself from your customers. Those are all allowable expenses along with all the all you know the various cleaning supplies and things that would have been necessary. Um, there is one important ineligible use of funds, and grants awarded under the program should not be used to repay or pay down any portion of a loan that was obtained through COVID nineteen fed, uh, federal COVID nineteen assistance or New York State loan assistance for COVID nineteen, like the New York Forward Loan Fund. It's not intended to repay loans. So now, I want to talk a little bit about the certification and the documents that you're gonna to need to upload to the website. So there is an application certification document that's part of this process. And this is one of the required documents to begin the, the, uh, the processing of your application. So, and we're gonna walk through how the application works in a moment, but uh, you are required to begin the processing of your application. You do need to upload both of your tax returns. You do need to upload this application certification that's been signed and you do need to upload your photo ID. It's the minimum amount of documentation that can be up, uh, uploaded to begin the review of your, doc of your documents. So you'll wanna download this application certification in its electronic form, print it out, sign it, and then you can re-upload it back into the site. Uh, so this documentation, this is basically a disclosure for all the things that you're acknowledging uh, that are, all, all the disclosures, how the grants are allowed to be used, um, that you're not restricted under mandates and so on and so forth, that you're not, you're not a nonprofit, that you're not a religious organization and so on and so forth. So again, you can download that electronically. There are complete instructions on how to download that here in this program guide. I'm not gonna walk through that in this presentation, but uh, there are complete instructions if you're not sure how to do that on your computer. This, uh, this, uh, this guide is available on the website and you can always refer to this guide to, you know, to complete that task. So again, you're gonna wanna print it, certify it, and then re-upload it. So now some tips for applying. Uh, first of all, we do suggest that when you're using your uh, computer, we do recommend you use Google Chrome. It does seem to work best on the website. If you had, don't have Google Chrome on your computer, there are instructions on the website to help you download it. Always gonna to wanna to make sure you clear your cache. Uh, open a window in incognito mode, which is the privacy mode. It keeps the data from being remembered on your computer or being cached. So when you're putting in that sensitive information, nothing's gonna to try to grab it from your browser. And of course, you're gonna wanna disable your pop-up blocker. 
uh, because there are multiple pop-ups that the website is going to allow or is going to expect when you verify your data. So otherwise, it's going to, you're going to have a problem walking through the different steps as it issues the pop-ups. So, and there is, again, in this guide, there are tips on how to clear your cache, how to use incognito mode, and how to disable that pop-up pop blocker on your browser. Uh, we do want all the documents submitted in PDF format. Um, please uh, try to make them clear. Uh, you know, you'll know when you go to create your document that it's that it's clearly, uh, it's not crumpled, it's not out of focus, it's not misframed, so that the computers can show, can the optical recognition that the software uses to, to digitize the documents is gonna work properly. Um, there is free, a software like let's say for example if you need help trying to scan these devices or scan these documents there is free software that's available for phones that will automatically create pdfs you can use your camera on your phones to create pdfs again there's more information about this in this document on the website uh, we do also ask that you watch your v your email address um, make sure you use a valid email address because there's a lot of information that's going to go to your email make sure you have an email address you're going to monitor um, Emails that include things like info at are going to be excluded from the system. They're not going to be recognized. So it's important to have a, a unique email address that isn't something that's going to go to a generic mailbox like administrator at or an info at from your website. And also there is the ability to, to in the actual web screens for the application, you can translate the language into all of the application itself in all of these various languages. And we do have a non-English language support for the application via the call center. So if you do wish to call the call center, the 100 number, which is on the front page of the website, uh, that information is available in multiple languages. So now the application. So the way the grant portal works is that when you log into the grant portal for the first time, so we are using an organization, Lendistry, a Lendistry is an organization, they're actually a CDFI, that is helping administer this program, process these applications, and uh, issue the funding to you. Lendistry is a, a, pro, as a company was selected primarily because they have done things like this for other states, so they have a, a system in place that can handle the volume that's necessary to get this money out to you in a reasonable uh, rate of speed and a reasonable amount of time. So when you log into the site to click to begin an application, uh, you may see a message that looks like this, where you're in line to start your application process. And it's very important that you only complete one application. Don't complete a secondary application. If you've already completed one application, one application, one business, submitting multiple applications be because you haven't heard back, is a mistake because it's going to trigger the site to uh, issue a, it's going to pop up essentially as a, as a potential fraud and it's going to slow things down. So you'll see this example here on the screen where the number of users ahead of you 2,340. Uh, I didn't see any of, I didn't see any numbers, any wait times that were this bad yesterday. So when I went on and looked at it a couple times yesterday, I had a wait time of only a few seconds before it was going to let me start an application. Uh, I will say also that as you're completing the application, what's going to happen is once you reach a certain threshold where there's enough information to generate a user account, it's going to generate a user account for you. And you can always log back in and complete your application if for some reason you get kicked out or for some reason you can't complete in that amount of time. So section one, getting started with your application, name, address, phone number, zip code. Uh, if you are referred by a partner like an SBDC, you're going to want to put that in. Uh, along with your preferred language. Again, please uh, use a valid email address because it's gonna be very important. You're gonna need it to complete the rest of this, the rest of this process. There is an SMS text policy. They will text you updates on your, on your documents. And they can text you updates if you, there's something missing or if there's something that they need that is an available option. If you wanna be opted into that program, you're just gonna wanna click that I accept the SMS text policy box. If you don't want to be opted in, you can choose to ignore that and not click that and you won't receive texts or auto dialed calls. So now we're going to do your owner details in section two. These are the details of the owner. 
and then you must click the terms and conditions. So once you click your OK on your terms and conditions, at that moment in time, that's when it's got enough information to generate a user account for you, which will actually appear uh, in your email box. And we'll talk about that in a moment. So business information, you're going to want to put in your, your business name, uh, the name your business is operating under, if it's applicable, along with your EIN, your business phone number, your business type, you know, where you're incorporated. Of course, uh, your business start date is important. Your business website, if you do have a business website, it's important to note that with these fields, they all need to be filled. So please make sure you fill all the fields. You don't have to fill address line two, but everything with, it, with an asterisk needs to be filled. That includes your website. If you don't have a website, please type in none.com. Or if you don't have a DBA, just type in none. Um, the system is going to be looking for that information to fill those fields. Uh, so how can we help? This is where you're going to ask for uh, the purpose of your grant, what you think the purpose of your grant is, or what you think you're going to primarily use your grant for. Your estimated amount of your grant, there's a check eligibility button there on the side of that line where you can see where you can try to calculate how much you think you're eligible for for your grant. Of course, you're, it's only, you're only going to get a grant that is actually uh, fits the calculation. Uh, once your product, once it's reviewed, you can't put in a million dollars there and get a million dollar grant. But uh, that, that is going to um, use it as a guidepost for processing. And I should also note that you'll notice here on the screen where it says how we can help you all the way to the right there is a box that says watch video okay um, if you clicked and each section has one of these if you click on that watch video it's actually going to give you a video tutorial as how to walk through and answer each of these questions not only that but if you were not a native english speaker or you needed just needed this translated into another language you can watch that video and there are subtitles for all those other 12 languages that are available to help you walk through this particular section or all of these different application sections. So, I mean, it's a very friendly site. In addition, you'll see, if you look in here, there's the, was your business profitable in 2019 line? You'll see that there's a little icon, a little I with a circle around it. That icon means that there's more information there. So if you hover over that, it's going to give you more information. In this case, that will give you a little drop down that'll tell you where to find that on your tax return. So, and so to continue, you want to put in um, your annual gross receipts for 2019 from your tax return, that you were profitable, um, your number of full-time employees, your number of part-time employees in 2020. Uh, jobs created is really, it's not necessary that you had you created any jobs, but you can put that information there. Number of jobs retained, how many employees you've kept, that's all information. It's going to be looking for answers, although it's not going to affect the outcome of your grant. So business demographics, it's going to ask for some information as to what your business is. Um, it's going to ask you what your customer base is, whether you're primarily a business to business business, where you're primarily servicing other businesses or your business to consumer business. Let's say your retail store, you're direct, dealing directly with consumers or both. Um, it's going to ask, uh, what does your business do? And there's a drop down that's going to give you a, a little bit of a breakdown of different different categories, um, what type of business it is, whether it's a wholesale business or retail business, and so on. Uh, one of the important things it's going to need is it's going to need your NAICS code. It's going to look for your NAICS code to see what type of business you have, um, where you, what category your business fits in, and uh, there's a more information on how your NAICS code works if you don't know what your NAICS code is there under that I button again, where you can hover for it. And there's also a link to the NAICS code, a NAICS code website where you can go in and you can put in your type of business and it's going to give you a code back that you can type in there. Um, of course, and NAICS codes are self are self assigned. So no one assigns you a NAICS code, but what it is, is it's, it's a classification system. It's, it's a federal classification system that shows uh, what a category your business fits in. So they are asking for that information. And that's going to ask if you're a women-owned business, a better-owned business, uh, whether you have a disability. Oh, it's going to ask for race, ethnicity uh, information. It's going to ask franchise information. It's going to ask if you're a minority-owned business all here on the screen. You just want to answer those questions. And now it's going to lead you through a list of disclosures. As of the data application, is your business open and operating? Are you a for-profit business? 
are you in are you in compliance with with state and local laws do you owe back taxes so on and so forth all the all of the requirements are all of the the things that have been mentioned previously uh did you receive help from an entrepreneurship assistance center or community development organization or chamber of commerce or an sbdc it's going to ask it it's going to ask you those questions you just want to want to choose the answers yes or no putting your gross receipts information this is what's going to generate that disclosure that it's going to print out that you're going to have to sign and re-upload finally there's going to be a confirmation so uh, when you reach the end here, you can choose yes or no. If you choose no, it's going to save your application but not submit it for processing. Um, if you choose yes, it's going to submit it for processing. Once you've chosen yes, you can't make any further changes to the information that you've already put in. If you need to make a change, you're going to need to contact the Lendistry 800 number, the 800 number for the website, in order to make those alter alterations. So you want to check it over real quick, make sure you've got it all correct before you say yes. And then once it's submitted, then you can go on to submitting your documents. And again, if this confirmation message doesn't appear, make sure your pop-up blocker is disabled in your web, in your web browser, because this is going to come up as a pop-up. You'll receive a confirmation that your file is completed. And what's going to happen is you're going to get a separate email with your username and password to the portal. And then you can use those login credentials to upload your documents. So this now this is where you can begin the upload of your documents process and check your clutter, your junk, your spam folders to make sure uh, if you don't receive this right away, it should be in your, it could potentially be, have gone to clutter or junk or to spam for your username and password. It'll become from a web address, no reply at mylendistry.com. So once you receive that username and password email, and like I said, this is gonna be auto-generated, chances are by the time you've reached the end of that application, this is already in your email box because it would have been auto-generated just after step two. Um, it's going to, you, you're going to use this information and log into the Lendistry portal to upload your documents. You can just click the click here to log in button on the purple email, uh, the purple box here on the email to begin the process. Now, how do you upload your documents? So you're going to reach a screen that shows that uh, where you're going to go to upload all your documents. It's going to ask you at the top of the screen to make sure to verify your business type is listed correctly because it's going to change the documents that are going to be listed below. Um, documents that are listed with a red asterisk, application certification, your ID, your business tax return for both years. Those have to be completed um, to complete the online application. You have to upload those within, within 14 days of completing the application uh, for the application to be valid. Items with a blue asterisk are, are selected to move forward with the application process. Uh, you'll be notified if you need to upload them after that. You can upload them if you want to beforehand. If you just are, you know, want to make sure that everything is complete up front, you can do that. But you don't have to do that to go to the selection process. Uh, banking information is only needed if you're approved for funding. Um, if a document doesn't apply to your business, you can always choose the NA button here on the side next to pending. So if it's the MIS 45, for example, you have no employees, just click NA and that'll go away. Um, all documents should be submitted as PDF files. Excuse me. All documents should be submitted as PDF files. Please don't use any special characters. And uh, you can password protect your documents if you want to, but you're gonna be required to enter that uh, password information in the portal when you upload it. So, Again, how to upload, you wanna select your document type. It's gonna give you a message to browse in your computer or on your device where all your documents are gonna be listed. You can, you can select the document. If it does have a password protection, you can put in your password right there. If it's not protected, you just say that it's not protected and, and you can go ahead and upload it. I said, uh, this, all this information, all these slides, tutorials for this, this is all available on the website. So I don't wanna to go too deeply into the into the nuts and bolts of this. Um, and now linking your bank account information. This is only required if you're improving your grant, if you've been approved for grant funding. Lendistry uses Plaid, which uh, can set up an ACH transfer between your bank and your credit union or your credit union to Lendistry to complete the, tra the transfer of funds. So uh, there is a walkthrough on how to use Plaid, how to upload your documents for your bank info. So it is very straightforward. There are a lot of orga other organizations that actually use the Plaid system. So I'm not gonna walk too deeply into this right now because uh, you'll be worried about this when you get to the end of your application 
and you won't remember what I'm saying right now. So, <laughs> um, so this is uh, said. So this tutorial information is available on the site. So now uh, I'm gonna answer. I'm available to answer any questions. So I know that that was a lot of information that was thrown out there very quickly. And I know some of the application information as far as the technical information can get kind of heavy. But if there are any qualifications or any questions about how does my business qualify, things like that, be glad to try to answer them. And I'll turn my camera on. <laughs> so if there are any questions, uh, you can just put them in the chat or put them in the q and I'm not seeing anything in the chat. The only thing in the chat was from the person, Anna. Do you want to um, unmute and ask your question um, about the unemployment? So, um, so the unemployment uh, does not disqualify her from the grant, but does she need to um, put that on the application as far as it says, um, does it fall under receiving COVID-19 related emergency no. funding? No. No, no, it does okay. not. No, that's only, that's only for those specific, it's only for specific grant programs. It really, it's those specific federal programs. The only programs that are gonna really exclude you are gonna, are gonna be pay, paycheck protection loans because they're convertible to grants over $100,000, that's a total. So if you received round one and round two, as long as they don't add up to $100,000, they can be forgiven, unforgiven, doesn't matter. Uh, and the restaurant recovery, uh, the restaurant resiliency funds, the, the, the SBA restaurant fund is excluded because again, those grants were very, very, very generous. If you were lucky enough to get in, um, a lot of businesses of course did not get in or won't be able to get in. And of course, if they didn't get in and don't get money from it, they're more than you know, more than welcome to apply for this program. So those are the only two um, things that are really excluded. If you received an idle loan, that's great. It uh, doesn't matter. If you received an, a New York Forward Loan Fund loan, that's great. Uh, loans don't count. It's just those two grant programs, just to try to make sure that, um, you know, that this is targeted more towards the businesses that were unable to receive any other grant funding from other sources. Of course, Paycheck Protection, uh, could become a grant uh, because it can be forgiven. Okay, great. Is there any other questions? You can, again, you can put them in the chat or unmute yourself. Okay. Doesn't sound like it. Doesn't well, I would uh, welcome everyone to go to the nysmallbusinessrecovery.com website. So that is the website for the application program. So all of this information is available. And there on the screen is also the 800 number. Uh, that's the, that's the um, helpline for the program. Runs from 8 to 8, Monday through Friday at this moment. It's also going to be running uh, 8 to 8 on Saturday this weekend uh, because this is the opening weekend for the program. So I hope everyone will go in and apply and especially, you know, folks upstate, please get your applications in. I want to see as much of this money as possible go upstate. I am from upstate. Let's get money upstate. Let's get money upstate. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much, Matt, and for all of the uh, very helpful information. Sure. Thank you, Dan. Thanks for having me. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you for attending. Thank you.